On the first day of October, Halloween gave to me a masked hawk being creepy. Hey everyone, welcome to another round of the 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, I am Bo, your host for the shenanigans. And what we do, like we always do about this time, is we have assembled 31 movies to talk about. One movie every day, a movie that we have never talked about on the 31 Days of Halloween before. And uh, it is a mix of movies I have seen that are classics. Uh, or that I want to talk about, or this was a good reason to go back and revisit them, and some movies that are classics, and I've just never seen them. And this is a great excuse to visit some of those movies too. But more than that, more than anything else, it's really a way to come together, and and for, for my part of you know watching all these movies and really getting in the Halloween spirit, but also sharing this, and hopefully... Uh, as you listen to it, then you get in the Halloween spirit too. And we can kind of celebrate that together. Uh, it's a, a communal event, really. And and the first stage in my cult, hopefully. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we're going to start off with a movie that I had not seen. Uh, although it's a recent movie, it's a, a 2022 film. And uh, I, I feel like this is going to begin a run of movies that are sort of a best of Blumhouse or a an exploration of the history of Blumhouse so far. Uh, I've got about a week's worth of movies here that are all produced by Jason Blum. Some of them very good, some of them not so good, but we're going to talk about, you know, all of them, most of them really good. And to that end, let's start with uh, The Black Phone, which was really the movie that I'd been wanting to watch for a while, but I was being real lazy about it. Uh, I didn't see it in the theater, even though people said, no, 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 this is good. My problem was with the black phone is that I'm not really the biggest Scott Derrickson fan. Uh, I don't really think that uh, uh, the Doctor Strange movie is all that great, which he directed. And he was also uh, responsible for Sinister and um, what else? Deliver Us From Evil and The Day the Earth Stood Still, which isn't very good, and The Exorcism of Emily Rose, which is okay. Uh, so there were a number of movies that I wasn't, you know, like Scott Derrickson has never been a director that just knocked my socks off. And um, it, it's written by him and C. Robert Cargill, who I think is maybe a little bit more consistent as I look at uh, his output. He he did Sinister. He also did Sinister 2, which is not very good. But uh, also wrote on Doctor Strange, which again is, is kind of fine. But I think The Black Phone is maybe the best film. Not just maybe. I think The Black Phone is the best film Scott Derrickson and, and Robert Cargill have done. I think this movie is actually kind of special and has rocketed up the, the charts to be one of my favorite uh, of the year. Uh, so the premise is basically, no spoilers for The Black Phone, but the premise is, is essentially um, that there's a, a child abductor on the loose and there is uh, a young man and his sister... Uh, you know, both in middle school to high school, early high school, maybe. Um, but so Finney is the, the kid, uh, his sister is Gwen and Ethan Hawke plays the, the abductor, the, the guy grabbing all these, uh, children known only as the grabber in the movie, which I like. And, um, the movie is really about bullying you know, kind of from both sides of, of that equation. Uh, Jeremy Davies, who, you know, always plays a weirdo, plays a weirdo in this. He is a, an alcoholic father who is dealing with the death of his wife under, you know, unfortunate circumstances. It, it, it appears that she has taken her own life at a certain point and was having some mental issues. And he's drinking his way through that pain and as a result is 
often abusive with his his kids. You know, borderline neglectful slash abusive. And Finney is also being bullied at school by some of the local kids. The one, uh, the one thing that he's got going for him is that there's a, a friend of his who's kind of tough that sticks up for him. Uh, but unfortunately, he goes missing as well. And ultimately, uh, you know, the whole movie hinges on the fact that Finney is grabbed by this guy, by the grabber. And Ethan Hawke is wonderfully creepy in this. And the thing I like most about the black phone is that it's not about the killer. Um, you know, there is some of that and there's some implication of what his pathology is and, and what his underlying psychology is, but there's not a ton of backstory. There's not a lot of, Hey, this is what, why he is the way he is. This is what his childhood was like. Um, nothing like that. He's just, you know, kind of a human monster. And, um, and also a bully, right? Like the whole thing is Finney ultimately learning to stick up for himself, but having to do so with the aid of uh, a black phone, the titular black phone that is disconnected, but is in the basement that Finney starts getting phone calls on. And it's the previous victims of the grabber. And, you know, they are trying to help him escape in some degree. And the thing that, I really like about that part of it is that it's it's pretty creepy. There aren't a lot of jump scares, unlike a movie like Sinister, which is mostly jump scares. The Black Phone is much more of a, a psychological film. It's more a film of dread. And even when you're dealing with the ghosts, there's more of a, a devil's backbone kind of vibe to it, uh, where these kids are just in the state when they they were in when they died and we get some backstory on on the kids uh which is is fairly interesting as well um there's some really creepy stuff about where these kids are as they're calling like what being dead is like that is strange and adds a, a really eerie texture to the whole thing i haven't read the short story the black phone which was written by joe hill who is of course stephen king's son um, I, but I would like to, and I should. Uh, I may do that before long. I, one could argue I should have done it before recording this, but I didn't, so shut up. Uh, <laughs> I, I just watched the movie, all right. Um, but I, I wonder how much of that stuff was in the story and just translated over into the film. But if it's an invention of the movie, it's a really creepy one. It's a really interesting one. Um, but the movie is really satisfying the way that it comes together. There's a little bit of a head fake at a certain point that may remind you of another movie. Um, but that said, the very conclusion of the film um, comes together. It's one of those things where like, oh, all the things that I've seen so far in the movie are now going to come together in a, a way that informs the actions of the main character, Finney. And it's it's really well done. It, it, it is very satisfying. And it, and also the very ending of the movie, um, is equally satisfying because it ends in a way that isn't completely a happy ending. Uh, again, I don't want to get into deep spoilers, but there, there is a little bit more about the relationship between this abusive father and his kids that leads you to believe that maybe this isn't totally wrapped up. Maybe this isn't, you know, the, the happy Hollywood ending that a movie with less subtlety and with less confidence in the kind of story it's telling uh, might not deliver. And I, I like a lot about the black phone. The, the more I think about it and even talking to all of you right now about this movie, um, I like it even more. I think it's a, it's a creepy movie. I think it's really well done. Uh, I really don't have a lot of complaints with it. I think it's it's kind of a top-notch horror film and, and one of the best of the year. And, you know, this is one of those examples where a Blumhouse film is, uh, you know, it allows a freedom for a director like Scott Derrickson to do something that's a little different, a little more interesting, that isn't just capitalizing on a known property or or chasing kind of a goofy premise 
it, it's a very thoughtful kind of movie. And it's a very adult movie, even though it deals with, you know, a 13 year old protagonist. The themes of the film are very mature. And uh, so I would not recommend you watch it with your kids. For one thing, I think it would disturb them for another thing. Um, I don't think they would really appreciate the fact that the the subtext of the movie is really what makes the movie great and not just good. Uh, but the idea of, of you know, the, the, this recurring violence and how you ultimately learn to stand up for yourself and um, how in some ways that the, the, the violence of the past can inform um, your behavior in the future and... And it's just really rich. It's really good. Uh, the, the, it, it was surprising to me that I liked the Black Phone as much as I did, but I really had a wonderful time with it. Um, I, 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 if I do have one complaint, it's that I think because you're dealing with child actors, I think the kid who plays Finney, um, a kid named Mason Timms, I think is how you would pronounce that, like the river. That's how it's spelled. Um, I think he's terrific. I think his sister, played by Madeline McGraw, I think she's okay, and she has to do some heavy lifting here and there in the movie, and sometimes I think her performance is a little, uh, a little not great, you know, I wouldn't go so far as to call it bad, but in a movie that is, is sort of highlighted by great performances by Jeremy Davies and Ethan Hawke and Mason Timms, that, uh, you know, a slightly off-note performance from Madeline McGraw, uh, here and there sometimes she's totally fine but there are some scenes I, I don't think she's uh as good and that's unfortunate uh but it's also not you know it, it doesn't hamstring the movie or anything she is not uh so in in elped in the role that it drags the movie down and most of the time she's fine there are just like i said a couple of scenes where i'm like eh, I, I feel like maybe another take there <laughs> would have been okay uh but Maybe it's just that I don't deal with 10 and 11 year old girls that often, which is kind of not true. I deal with a 10 year old girl all the time now because of my girlfriend and her kids. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, I should have, uh, been a, a stage parent and, uh, and, and forced my girlfriend's kid to, to try out for this part. I think she would have nailed it anyway. That's neither here nor there. My, uh, eventual attempts to ruin the lives of children <laughs> is is irrelevant to this conversation. I think Black Phone is great. I think you should watch it. If you haven't seen it, it's a great start to the Halloween season. It's spooky. It's interesting. Uh, Ethan Hawke plays, you know, maybe not one of the all-time iconic killers in film history, but certainly one that I find very eerie. And uh, for added benefit, there's a mask that he wears that has like different pieces to it that he swaps in and out and changes. And the mask was designed by Tom Savini. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of great stuff about the black phone. Um, so that's it. That's it for the, the first one. The first movie is in the books. The, the 31 days of October is officially underway now. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, here on the Legion Podcast main feed or uh, the Dark Parade, it will be appearing on both of those feeds. So if you are not subscribed to the Legion Podcast main feed, please just do a search for Legion Podcast in the podca podcast catcher of your choice. And you'll be able to get great episodes of Cinema Beef and Cinema PsyOps and uh, uh, What Am I Leaving Out? Friday Nightmares and Hello, This Is The Doom Show and a bunch of great shows and I'm going to leave something out right now and then I'm going to feel bad about it later when somebody says, hey, you didn't mention my show. So every show on Legion Podcast equally good. Go check them out uh, and you can do that by subscribing to that main feed or if you're listening to this on the Dark Parade uh, or or listening to it on the Legion Podcast main, fe main feed and are not subscribed to the Dark Parade, then uh, subscribe over there where you get a lot more of... Uh, you know, interesting stuff that we're doing over there on the Dark Parade. Uh, we have weekly episodes. It used to be m multiple episodes within the same week, and I don't know that we're ever going to get back to that. It depends on uh, scheduling and whatnot. But uh, there are things like the Heart of Horror and What You Watching with me and Jamie Sammons, and deep dives on movies. By the time that uh, this drops, you should be hearing a special episode on Muscle, uh, Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell. You know, there's more to come, I promise you. 
uh, as well as reviews and found footage uh, bonus episodes called Found Footage Fool. All kinds of stuff. So if you're not subscribing to The Dark Parade, hop over and, uh, and, and I hope you'll enjoy it. As for the 31 Days of Halloween, we are rolling on tomorrow. We are going to continue uh, this theme of a Blumhouse kind of, of movie. And uh, I won't say any more than that because I like for every day to be a little bit of a surprise. Uh, so, hey, thanks very much for listening. Happy Halloween, everybody. It is it is the first uh, step in our journey towards the, the, the happy day. I've got, of course, a movie picked for uh, the 31st day of Halloween that I hope will we'll, uh, put the, the candles on the cake, the pumpkin cake uh, this year. Uh, so I'm very excited. I hope you could hear that. I love Halloween more than anything. I love doing these because I get to talk about some great horror movies and, and even the not so great horror movies are, are made better by the fact that they're part of this celebration. So, uh, it, it's, it's October 1st. Get out there. Have a great beginning to October. And, uh, I'll see you back here tomorrow for day number two in our 31 days of Halloween. See you then.